sadness of being murdered. I was looking for somebody who got the idea of that sadness of being misperceived. I can remember reading the script and it's embarrassing weeping i mean i cried you know i read the thing i cried i thought it was the most one of the most beautiful things i'd ever read in my life you know you look to actors in their eyes and you know he's got those kind of eyes that that, that can say things without speaking i was absolutely convinced that tim would never give me the gig people saw him as this sort of uh teen idol and uh, he's really not that way I, I picked up the phone and said hello and then a voice on the other end said you are edward scissorhands He wasn't, he never had a bad attitude at all, ever, not once. And when, you know, when I worked with him, he was still with Amber and Amber would come on set and she was, she didn't really have a say in all of that, but just her demeanor was like, nobody liked her. And uh, Johnny was all about her and she just was like, it was like our privilege to be in her presence. But then in the presence of Johnny, it was like his privilege to be in all of our presence. It was a very big difference. And so I remember uh, being in, because uh, I worked very closely with him on set because uh, the nature of my work as a stills photographer was to be next to camera and, and ready to shoot at all times. Because I was next to camera and I was next to the director a lot, um, Johnny would come off off set uh, between takes, and he would have conversations with the writer and the director, and they would go over the scene and be like, "Okay, what can we do? What can we do? Whatever." And because I was near that, mind you, I had nothing to do with him delivering lines, or this wasn't my place to speak. However because I was near them in the conversation, just in the vicinity, Johnny would always make eye contact with me as if, like, what do you think? And he would make jokes about it and stuff, but he wasn't, he never had a bad attitude at all, ever. Not once. And when, you know, when I worked with him, he was still with Amber. And Amber would come on set and she was, she didn't really... <laughs> and that's all I'm going to say about it. Amber Heard accuses actor of sex assault as he calls his ex-wife a compulsive liar. Now, I don't know how many of you follow uh, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. I'm not a big Hollywood person, so I most time give a crap. Um, but they're, they're in this trial where they're each accusing each other of abuse and all kinds of horrible things. Apparently he said that he wouldn't mind if she were decomposing in a trunk of a car, um, which is pretty mean. But uh, I'm just going to say this, and some of you have know this already and some of you have never heard this, but this is my whole thing about the case. I spent 30 to 60 minutes in a green room, green room with Amber Heard in New York City before a television show. Uh, way before she met Johnny Depp, or just before she met Johnny Depp. Uh, she was there with her manager, or whoever the heck she had in there with her. And I spent 
30 to 60 miserable minutes listening to that woman and I said to myself this woman is a narcissist and she is a social climber and she is a manipulator and whoever she sinks her little claws into God help him and that would be you Johnny Depp <laughs>